Hey, what's up, guys? It is officially spooky season once again, which means I get to talk about Halloween stuff, finally. And since September hit, I have been watching a ton of Halloween specials, Halloween episodes of all my favorite TV shows. And one of those is a personal favorite from Are You Afraid of the Dark? And it is called The Tale of the Twisted Claw. This is the only Halloween episode they ever made for the series. I think technically they did like a special two episode Cutter's Treasure, something like that. From Nickelodeon Video, Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Tale of Cutter's Treasure. A special one hour episode where two kids must fight a cutthroat pirate from the past or face no future. But it wasn't Halloween-y like this one. It wasn't set on Halloween or anything. If you're looking for that, this is the one. Of course, though, with Are You Afraid of the Dark, a lot of the uh, episodes are really good to watch around Halloween. My personal favorite in the series is The Tale of the Dark Music. It's great for Halloween time. Plus all the hits, you know, Ghastly Grinner, Dead Man's Float, stuff like that. I mean, it didn't even work. It's a great show. But if you're wanting specifically a Halloween one, this is it. And in my limited research, I saw on Wikipedia, so take this with a grain of salt because I'm not sure. But from what that said, this actually served as the pilot in America on Nickelodeon. I know it wasn't the first episode, but I guess it was the first episode that aired in the States. If that's the case, it's a really good one because of the way it opens, which is very unique. It opens in the middle of a story with a kid in bed. He hears a noise. There is a big spooky grim reaper in his closet that's coming to get him and it cuts. He wakes up. It was a dream or was it because the spooky Grim Reaper guy is actually there. And while we're on this for a second, indulge me. I just want to point out that this kid has one of those classic 90s television kids rooms with posters all over the wall. He's got stars on his ceiling. He's wearing some dope ass PJs. And that's one of my favorite things about going back and watching this show. It's the wardrobe. If you go back, I mean, this episode is a great example. These kids are wearing some dope ass clothes. Right off the bat, one of the main characters in the show is wearing a sweet hat, a fresh set of feelers, and just at the bottom of his jacket, you can see he's wearing one of those pink and black, like scribbly, zigzaggy striped shirts. And if you just look around on our characters and in the background, you see all kinds of sweet outfits that are that I would just love to have now. I mean, look at this kid's shirt. It's dope as fuck. And I want it. But anyway, that cuts to the Midnight Society. One of the kids is telling this story about the kid having a nightmare about the spooky Grim Reaper guy. And he doesn't have an ending for the story. He is just like, I, I don't know how it ends. I just started telling the story, I guess, without knowing where I was going with it. And the other members of the group don't like that. Yeah, but I mean, what about tonight? It's almost lights out and we haven't had a full story yet. But David saves the day with the tale of the twisted claw. And when we go into the story, it opens up on a sweet, slow pan out of a jack-o'-lantern lit in the window and we get introduced to our two main characters Dougie and Kevin and they're out on Halloween Eve causing mischief along with all the other kids in the neighborhood and they decide to go to Miss Clove's house to pull some sweet pranks and so basically they knock on the door and when she answers they straight up assault this poor woman 
Kevin is waiting with a can of shaving cream and he point blank shoots her directly in the eyes with this shaving cream. If she hadn't been wearing glasses, she probably would have been in a world of hurt. And I don't think these kids counted on her wearing glasses. I don't think they gave a fuck, especially Kevin. But more on that later. We'll talk about Kevin towards the end, I think. But yeah, even still, they cover her glasses and face in shaving cream. She trips and knocks over a vase. They're extremely lucky that she didn't like fall and break a hip or bust her head on the nightstand and just die. But they cause her to break her vase. They run off. She kind of comes to the door and slowly goes from anger to maniacal laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts to Halloween night. Kevin's in his costume. He's waiting for Dougie to arrive. You're a bomb. You're a bomb every year. So you get the same candy. And I'd also like to point out there are a few other kids there and one of them is dressed as grapes, which is a great costume. Just wanted to point that out real quick. But yeah, they go trigger treating and for some reason, they decide to go back to Mrs. Clove's house. And so, you know, granted, Kevin was pretty quick with the shaving cream to the eyes, but you know, this is the 90s, it's a small neighborhood. She for sure knew who got her, but they go anyway, mainly because of the insistence of Kevin to return to the scene of the crime and get a little status for being the only kids brave enough to visit the witch's house on Halloween. She answers, she doesn't seem to remember that it was them who tried to kill her last night. And she actually seems pretty excited they're there. She invites them in, which is a thing that creepy people always do on these TV shows. I never got invited inside of a house on Halloween. And if I had, I don't know if I would go in, especially if it was the local witch who was doing it. But they step in. And she gives them a fucking demon claw as a treat. It's the claw of a voucher. Ew. Kind of forces it on them. They reluctantly take it kind of just to get the fuck out of there. And they're headed home and pondering on whether or not this claw actually works. And that's when we get our first wish. Kevin makes a oddly worded wish. He wishes to, uh... Well, I wish we can go home and lose this stupid trick-or-treating. Whoa! which I guess means to just stop trick-or-treating, which I mean, you know, this is kind of a sketchy first wish. I mean, the kid's wishing to stop doing something and go home when he could just stop doing it and go home. But anyway, shortly after that, they run upon a strange gang of like 30 year olds <laughs> hanging outside of a baseball field with bicycles and these kind of creepy white masks. And these dudes just start bullying them, chasing after them on bikes. And I guess that's the, uh, the wish playing out. What are you complaining for? You got your wish. No more trick or treating. I'm out of here. These guys that they ran into scared them enough that they felt the need to go home and stop trick-or-treating, so there you go. There's the first evil twist of the wish gone wrong. Just them getting scared by some weirdo 30 old dudes and going home, not trick-or-treating anymore. The next day at school, Kevin meets Dougie at the his locker, and, uh, and Kevin is getting ready to run a, like a foot race, I guess in gym class, it, I don't know if this is an official competition. I guess it is because he gets a medal later. But yeah, he's trying to win the foot race for his local track team or something like that. I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to tell. It seems like a, just a thrown together like gym thing. All these kids are gathered in a like a field <laughs> seemingly behind the school and they're all just wearing like white t-shirts and shorts. There's a small crowd gathered and they're gonna have a foot race. And Kevin wants to win this foot race, especially against his apparent arch nemesis, Bostwick, who is the cool kid in school. Someone's gotta shut him down. So he gets the claw and he wishes 
that he could beat Bostwick in the foot race. Dougie doesn't like this. Dougie is warning him like, yo, this thing moved in my hand last night when I made a wish and then my wish came true in a bad way. So maybe we shouldn't be wishing on this thing, but Kevin does it. And in the race, right at the finish line, Bostwick gets tripped up by a mysterious ghost dog that appears out of nowhere. Kevin leaps over him as he writhes in pain on the ground and wins the race. Gets a medal and everything. But Dougie saw the ghost dog like kind of appear from behind a tree, so he's suspect. You cut to them at home later that night and Dougie is like, you know, I saw this dog come out of nowhere, dude. Like all of our wishes are turning sour on us. So they start arguing. And in the middle of the argument, when they start talking about Dougie and his folks, Kevin grabs the claw and wishes that Dougie would lose his folks. And immediately the phone rings. It's the police calling to inform Dougie that his parents have been in a horrible accident. Dougie's reaction in a panic is to immediately rip the phone out of the wall, which doesn't seem like a great idea. Him and Kevin start fighting over this claw because Dougie's over it. He's like, this thing is evil. You you just like killed my parents, dude. And they're arguing over what to do. Dougie's holding the claw and he says that he wishes his grandfather was around because he always knew what to do. And he had mentioned his grandfather earlier in kind of like a passing comment, which kind of implied that his grandfather was dead and that they were close. And so now we're stuck in that classic scenario. You've seen it a million times in lots of TV shows. Somebody can't accept loss, so they try to bring a loved one back using dark magic or necromancy. And you as the audience know that they're going to come back wrong. And as the ghoul or ghost or whatever they might end up being approaches the door unseen, right at the last minute, the character stops it. This plays out that same way. But while they're arguing about it, I mean, Kevin does not want to meet a ghost. He is not having it. He starts clamoring for the claw. He is not going to meet a ghost tonight. his car it's him no i don't want to meet no ghost he makes that very clear i got one wish left and ain't meeting no ghost and so as the uh rotten corpse of the grandpa approaches the door dougie finally gets the claw and he pulls a wishmaster which this episode predates wishmaster but he makes the ultimate reverse uno wish which is i wish we never broke the vase in the first place and so you know that means they never broke the vase they never pissed off miss clove she never gave them the claw problem solved slate's clean but right before we cut out the doorbell still rings they answer the door it's the vase with a note in it that says trick or treat I think the big takeaway from this episode is that Kevin sucks. He is a psychopath. He's the one who sprays Miss Clove directly in the eyes with shaving cream. When they go back, he kind of intimidates Dougie to come to the door with him. We can tell everybody that we were the only ones brave enough to go to the witch's house on Halloween. Or I could say that you were too scared and I had to run home to mommy. When he makes this wish for the race, this kid Bostwick, before the race, we see him like wish Kevin good luck. Good luck, Kev. Well, let's do it. Yeah. And Kevin is just like, whatever, man, you're my enemy. We're about to race. Fuck you. And when the kid trips and shatters his leg, Kevin is like, oh, no, I'm sure I didn't fucking just destroy this kid's leg. I'm sure it was just coincidence, right? And then the big final straw, he kills Dougie's parents. And poor Dougie is burdened with being his friend. And yeah, I kind of feel bad for Dougie. But this is a great episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark in general. It's also a decent Halloween episode. I mean, as far as a rating goes, I'll give it four stars. This is up there with the best of them, in my opinion, just as a, 
an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. On the Halloween scale, I mean, it opens up strong. Once you get into the actual story, it opens on a jack-o'-lantern in a window. That's great. It ends with the note that says Trick or Treat, reminding you that it's a Halloween episode. And for the first, I'd say like five or ten minutes, we're following Dougie and Kevin in that classic setting of the suburbs at night, kind of isolated, dark, spooky, trick-or-treating, pulling sweet pranks. But the middle section is kind of lacking. It starts to, you know, it pulls away from the Halloween setting. Maybe it would have been better if all this could have been facilitated in Halloween night so that we kept that aesthetic through the whole episode. But for what it is, I think they distributed the elements pretty decently to where you you leave feeling Halloweeny. So I'll give it like, I don't know, 20 pumpkins on the Halloween rating scale. But yeah, great episode. I highly recommend it if you're looking for Halloween fodder. But yeah, that's it. Are You Afraid of the Darks? The Tale of the Twisted Claw. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And until next time.